Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Exposure. Uh, I am absolutely bored silly, it's Easter weekend. I was my, uh, my new smoker shipped on Thursday and I was expecting it yesterday and uh, today's Saturday and uh, it still hasn't come. So I'm gonna guess that the uh, trucker stopped off at his house for Easter and is going to wait a while before he uh, brings me my smoker which will probably be after Easter, which will probably be Monday, which kind of sucks because I had a nice uh, cook plan. So I'm absolutely bored, and I figured today would be a good day to do some sharpening of my knives. I haven't done that in a while, and uh, they are quite dull. Um, and I've got a large assortment of them uh, to do. Uh, I've got filet knives, boning knives, um, chopping knives, slicing knives, all kinds of knives like that. So um, I've got this uh, Presto Eversharp. It's a professional uh, grade style sharpener and I've had it, I don't know, 10 years or something like that. And I only pull it out every so often and I don't think I've pulled it out for about five years now. Uh, but it uh, kind of has three settings. It has a, a coarse setting, a medium, in a fine setting um, and, uh, and and I mean for sharpening three settings it also has uh, settings for the thickness of a blade whether it be thin medium or a thicker blade which is more more than likely uh, like a meat cleaver style um, or an axe maybe I don't know I think an axe is a little bit too much for this uh, but a meat cleaver or something like that uh, we don't have any of that I have a lot of mediums, uh, and then most of my filet knives will probably end up doing on a thin. Uh, but uh, you know, some of them I use for um, you know culinary cooking. Uh, the filet knives like this one, uh, you know, I use that for uh, you know cleaning fish. And uh, the start of the season, I uh, I end up leaving you know one or two of these for my guests up at the cabin um, that rent my cabin out. Or not my cabin, my family's cabin. Uh, I leave that for them so that they can, uh, just in case they leave their uh, filet knife at home, they have something to clean their fish. So, without further ado, like I said, there's a coarse uh, setting, uh, a medium, and a fine, and this is you know for getting that final edge on it. The big, the big uh, one to start the coarse. That's for knocking. Uh, if you got nicks in your in your uh, blade, which I can feel a lot on this one, um, it's good to, to knock those back a little bit here uh, before you uh, before you start you know doing the other ones. Uh, the fillet knives probably won't need this setting. It'll just be these two. Uh, whatever you do on one side, you want to do on another. So if you're gonna do two passes here. You know, you do two on the left, two on the right, you know, or one, 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 one. And um, that's even making it uh, uh, easier on yourself. But it does help to sharpen your blades every once in a while, make your life just a little bit easier uh, in your kitchen. Uh, I've got my favorite knife here. This is uh, kind of a sort of an everything knife, uh, you know, paring knife style, a knife. Uh, cutting sausage cheese, you know on the on the cutting block uh, But this is one of my favorite knives that I use in the kitchen the uh, this is a uh, Japanese style knife I, I'm not sure the name exactly what they call these um, but This is a high carbon German steel an Acer roll and uh, I like this knife for cutting vegetables. Um, it has these indentations to release the food, like potatoes and things like that, that stick. Kick, carrot, celery, hard vegetables. This is, uh, this is a, a go-to item. And then of course I have my meat slicing knife. Um, probably don't need to put a big fine, you know, I don't have to put it on the big cutting edge. I can just put it on the fine ones. Uh, but this is like for cutting, um, you know, meats, brick, uh, brisket, uh, things like that. You're carving your turkey or uh, 
roasts or things like that. So you use a knife like that for that. And then uh, I got a couple of, uh, you know, just regular chopping knives. This is a uh, oh, Hinkle's uh, knife. This it's kind of worn off over time here. Another one, German steel. Uh, I think this is a little softer steel. It's not really a hard steel like this one is. And then this is a Pampered Chef. This is a coated ceramic or coated steel from Pampered Chef. I've had this one for a while. Again, just a ch another chopping style knife. And uh, you can use this for, you know, cutting fat and stuff like that off of uh, briskets and things. Uh, but that's what I use. Knives like this, like a boning knife and a fillet knife. Um, lost my paperweight, so of course my paper went flying. But let's start off. We've got this one here. This is this is a pretty much of a junk knife. I've had this forever. It came with a set. Um, it's an old standby made in Taiwan, stainless knife, uh, but I don't think it can cut much right now. Cuts okay, but we're going to go ahead and get started here. I've got this set to medium. Um, these orange marks on the side of this sharpener are guides, actually, that you want to hold your um, blade close to. You don't want to put any pressure on it because you'll actually move it. But uh, um, so you just want to, like I said, just keep it. Yeah, I try not to put too much pressure on it. Just let the knife's weight. the work and then we will um, take it through here as well And then the final one. And uh, if I look, I can see it did put a little bit of an edge on there. Pretty good. Take a look and see what it does. I'm just gonna cuts it rather nicely. Very, very nicely. Cut it very, very nice. Okay, so like I said, I uh I've got a bunch of these to do. This one is my, uh, like I said, it's my meat cutting knife. It's a brisket knife and uh, it'll cut a little bit. So I'm gonna start off, I'm not gonna use the big side. I'm just gonna turn it on and I'm gonna use the Again, I don't use hardly any pressure. I let the knife 
the knife's the blade weight. Um, do all the work. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Really, really sharp. Really, really sharp. Excellent. It's exactly what we want to what we want to see. Okay. Now, what do I've got here? So, I've got this Hellman's knife. This is another knife here. It's a different one. Like I said, this is a, a coated knife, and it doesn't cut at all. A little bit. Not bad. I'm going to actually put an edge on this one. And this one is a little thinner, so I'm going to go thin. Okay, let's see what we got. Windy out here today. I see. Well, I can just do this. Make it easy on myself. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see if it did anything. Because I might have to... So the start of it wasn't the best, but it finished well. So I think I'm going to go for another couple passes. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that was a massive improvement. Absolutely major difference. Good. So that one's done. Okay. Well, that worked out really well. Let's check this one out. What is it? What do we think? A little bit. So, I think I'm gonna. I see a couple dings on this one, so I'm just gonna go once.
Okay. I'd say that that was a success. I think we got a good edge on it. Okay, what about this one? This one has always lost its edge very, very quickly. This one actually, what it does is it kind of gets rid of the, gives you some new steel to work with actually. We'll just put this one on medium. See if. Okay, well, let's see what we got. I'd say, I'd say it's sharpened pretty good. So, that's a little demonstration. I'm not going to have you sit here bored while I, uh, you know, do all these. So, we'll continue the rest in uh, maybe fast forward uh, condition here.
Okay, so I uh, I did 15 knives in uh, oh 35 minutes, so that wasn't so bad. And um, as you can tell, they went from dull to uh, extremely sharp. Uh, how long it holds its edge, we'll never know. A couple of them I went back um, to the bigger grinder and uh, knocked back the steel a little bit to get a to get a um, different edge on it uh, because the the smaller wheels weren't weren't getting it done. And as soon as I did that and then redid the smaller wheels, it came back sharp as sharp as could be. So. Uh, that's it. Um, now I got to take these knives back and uh, get them all washed up, put away, and uh, get ready for um, hopefully getting my smoker. I've got my space all cleared out here uh, behind me. My prep table is done. Um, just waiting on the smoker to arrive again. Like I said, I. Uh, I really expected it yesterday. I, I really wish it would have, would have arrived. Um, disappointed because I actually started defrosting uh, brisket and some ribs because I figured, you know, it was going to come Friday. I was going to I was going to season it on Friday night, start to cook Saturday morning, this morning, and um, cook a nice brisket all night long, and then eat uh, brisket, ribs, and uh, uh, for for dinner tomorrow. Uh, but that didn't happen. So. You know, got to roll with the punches. So, looks like it's ramen noodles uh, for me for uh, for Easter dinner tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and if I would have, you know, known it wasn't coming, um, yeah, I would have planned to go up north and uh, visit my visit my mother for Easter. So, just uh, extremely disappointed that the trucking company didn't uh, at least give me a heads up that hey, we're not going to drop it off this weekend. You don't have to wait around. We'll, we'll be there Monday. That would have been just great with me. But no, I gotta wait around, stick around all weekend, and uh, hopefully they call. But my guess is they won't till Monday, when I'm at work, and then I'll have to take off work to come over here when he when the guy decides to drop it off, which is just a little selfish in my opinion. So, anyways, that's it. Got any questions or comments? Leave them below. Uh, again, this is the uh, Presto Ever Sharp Professional. Um, it served me well over the last 10 years or so. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. I bought it off Amazon. does a really great job. And um, yeah, I got no complaints. Um, you know, again, uh, I, let the, I let the knife do the work, uh, the weight of the knife do the work and the sharpening. I never put pressure on it. And some people do complain that... Uh, um, putting too much, you know, pressure can stop the wheel. Well, don't put any pressure on it, and that won't happen. As you can tell, I didn't have any problem. My wheel didn't stop. It ground them down. It, uh, you know, shredded this uh, this paper uh, very, very well, very, very easily, like a like a knife through butter, actually. So very happy. Again, questions or comments? If you like it, give me a like. And uh, other than that. See you next time. Go out, go and enjoy the outdoors. Take care. Ooh.